Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Reynoso, who you all probably know because he was originally on GabNet, okay, and uh, uh, and his cat in the background, by the way, I see your cat in the background. There she is, that's Sophie, yeah, over there. Yeah, it's Sophie, yeah, okay, she looks like she's resting today, keeping out she's of the... She's always resting, she's a cat. Yeah, right, don't you wish you were a cat, then he could just rest all the time. That's what I do anyway. They say that the average lion, for instance, who was a cat, mm-hmm. sleeps uh, 22 hours a day. And I, I believe would, it. And I would imagine a grown-up cat probably does the same thing, you know. Although the no, fe- this one's up quite a bit, so. The females are up long, more than the males. Oh. The males know. sleep all the time. Then they, uh, they do the hunting, you know, and the things like that. Although I think the lioness does the hunting as well. Uh, I think the lion just pretty much goes around inseminating the herd, and that's about it. Which is not a bad job if you can get it. Pretty good gig. Yeah, pretty good gig. So mm-hmm. how have you been, uh, Albert Reynoso? I've been fine. You know, the world is uh, the world continues to astound, yeah. as, we all, as we all know. Yeah. Uh, uh, and in spite of it all, I do exactly the same thing I've done for, for decades. And, and what is that? Taking it easy. Take Just it, taking it easy. Taking it easy. Enjoying stuff. Yeah. Complaining as little as possible. Well, you've been retired for how long now? Uh, I guess about 10 years. Mm-hmm. It's since they got rid of us at the uh, at the satellite joint. Yeah, that's been 10 years. I've been out of work for 10 years. Yeah, I don't mind it. Uh, well, you know, I do only because uh, this this kind of activity keeps me alive. You know. Well, you need to get some other hobbies then, my friend. No, I, this is my... Do you know something i got to tell you? The best thing you can do is if you can take a hobby and make it a profession. And that's exactly what I did. I mean, I uh, bro, entertainment was always my hobby growing up. And so all of a sudden it became my business. So what, what a better job to have. Excuse me, my eyes are tearing today. Uh, what a better job to have than your hobby. I suppose, but you should have other hobbies. What would you have done had there been no internet at this point? What would you have done? I probably would have died by now. <laughs> See, that's my that's my uh, that's my concern. If you don't have another hobby, something else. Well, some no, other- I had a hobby. I mean, video. I had a hobby with video, shooting video, editing video. That was a hobby with me. And it's never, so you would be doing that then? It's if, if, very. I don't think it ever really became a profession. Maybe for a very short time, when I was editing video for my friend Steve. I remember that. Yeah, but outside of that. You know, nothing. You know, so well, that's a shame. Well, let me no, see. Do no, I have other no hobbies? reading? No, uh, no writing. You don't write music. Your father was a musician. My you father don't was play a musician. Instruments. Uh, how could that be? I never played an instrument. You know, I mean, hmm. I was musically inclined. All right, but I was too lazy to learn an instrument. Like my father, first first thing he tried to teach me was violin. In fact, he bought me a baby violin when I was a child, mm-hmm. and um, uh, uh, he thought, "Hey, that then he'll play that, and then he'll become a vi-. well." I never became a violinist. Well, he should have given you a fiddle instead. It would have been easier. But here was the reason why: it wasn't that I couldn't maybe play. It wasn't that I uh, didn't have musical ability because I have kind of perfect pitch. I, I, you know, I know what notes are and I know when they're out of tune and so I mean, on. You have perfect pitch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I can't wait to test that one day. No, next I, time, next time I speak to no, you, you I'm can find hit a, a hit a note and then I can sing it, 
and I will sing the exact note. Yeah. All right. That's perfect pitch. All, All right. right. All right. I'm going to find that you out. You have to have perfect pitch to be a musician. Well, I don't know about that. Listen, listen to some of the music well, today. Well, yeah, right. They're all right. auto-tuned. All auto-tuned. Yeah. You don't but, need perfect pitch. But but I uh, I had perfect pitch. Uh, well, I I was I was very musical. I still mm -hmm. am basically, very musical. Wait, in what way are you musical? I'm, I'm always. This gets around to your your claim of knowing a ditch digger many years ago. Wait. In what way are you <laughs> musical? Tell me in what way you're musical. To begin with, let's go. As you back. listen to music, you know you're you're kind of like a wife, okay? In that, wait a minute. In that, you never forget anything that I've done. Well, uh, claims it, that are of dubious nature, I never you forget. You bring up that claim about I knew a ditch digger. Well, you you were very adamant when you when you when you were talking about and the ditch what? diggers need to, to have their money. They they no no no, and no, 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 no they, Here's digger, exactly what I said. Okay, is that it's always been my contention that you know I don't work for a living, but a ditch digger does, and a ditch digger's value to this society is perhaps more important than mine. Okay, because he digs a ditch and that brings the water or does the whatever, and you know. It 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 does something for the society. All I do is I just you know. I I agree, and but but then you went one step too far. What? You said I know a ditch digger. No, I no no. You said you don't know you a ditch said digger. That. You said you don't know a ditch digger, and then I in so that I could win the argument said yes, I know a ditch digger. Okay, so you don't know a ditch digger, I, and I'm you're thinking, musically inclined. Tell me, tell me about your musical inclination. What what is it you do with music that that inclines you? To oh, I, I always used to add music to my videos, and in in perfect sync to the to the picture. Okay. Yeah, yeah, All and right, I pick good, and I pick good that's music too. You know. That's not and I pick okay. music sometimes. Remember, remember, I had a theme song that I used by uh, uh, Professor Longhair. Yes, that's a very obscure piece of music, but it became my theme song because one day I was driving down the highway, and I had my uh, my uh, 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 cassette in the CD in the cassette player. Mm -hmm. When we had cassette players in cars, remember that. And uh, this song came up, and I all, all of a sudden said, that'd be a great theme song. And it, it, a very obscure piece of music called Rum and Coke by, uh, mm -hmm. by Professor Longhair. And it became my theme. Well, it's fortunate you had musical in inclination. Otherwise, you would have never been able to pick that up. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't have picked something. Have so, a, you'd have had a terrible theme. I wouldn't have been so just a, Maybe just a, a one-note drone going through the beginning of the show. Oh, you okay. Yeah. Musically inclined. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're right. When you're right, you're right. It, it happens once every, once once. But, in but all I'm saying is you're like a wife. You remember all those small little things about me. Now, for the time being... That'll change over the years. Well, it's yeah, pretty. yeah. Once I'm dead, you won't have to. No, that that won't happen. That that won't happen in my lifetime. I mean, are you going to go to my funeral and say, "And I remember when he said he knew a ditch digger"? If I go to your funeral, I certainly will bring that up. Oh, oh okay. And Alex knew a ditch digger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But you probably won't come to my funeral because you're down in Florida and it's too much trouble. No, it's not too much trouble. I can go visit my daughter at the same time, you know. Yeah. I see. Do, do, a, do a whole trip, yeah. Yeah, do a whole trip. Plan it, plan it at the right time of yeah, the Yeah, but year. if I'm dead, well, you can stay in the guest room anyway because my, my, oh. Marjorie will still be here. But if okay. Marjorie goes before me, you won't be able to use the, uh, the guest room. Everybody's going before you. You're going to linger. You think so? Yeah, you'll be like your mother. Because I don't feel like it now. You know, I feel like I just, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of lightheaded all the time. And all I, the time. All the time. So, so there's, no, there's no problem there. As long do as I like, still have my chops? I don't really know what your chops are. See, so. you see, <laughs> this, is the guy, this is the guy I relied on to say, good show, Alex. 
Well, I, 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 you know, I don't know because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't watch a lot of the uh, YouTube stuff, and I, I don't get involved in that stuff anymore. I distance myself from no, all. No, 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 no. But stuff. I'm saying when we did when we did shows, you, you never said good show, Alex. Great show. That was a great I did, show. I did when great. I thought there were good shows. Yeah, and you you got one, you know, one one a month or so. <laughs> <laughs> Not what you deserved. You know. you know what? You know what? I was thinking today. Uh, yeah. um, I, I I was thinking about the the beauty of you now, having to book guests, because you I don't book guests. You you have to contact me to see if I can be on here. Yeah. And I love the fact that you send a reminder with the link. This is what booking guests was all about for me. Couldn't stand it. So you hated it booking home? guests. I couldn't stand That's it. That's why no. I never had guests on my show unless they were booked by Sirius XM. You were so happy the day Sirius XM had central booking. I didn't. I didn't mind because the problem with booking guests wasn't the guest; it was the booking part. It was dealing with the PR people. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them just idiots. Yeah. You know, no, and the politics I, involved is is ridiculous. Other than that, I didn't mind. Although booking. I got to tell you, uh, uh, my ex-wife Ronnie, she used to produce my show, and she used to book mm-hmm. guests on the show. And a lot of the bookers we got to know, and some of them were very good people, really nice people. You know, a lot of the, the managers and, yeah. and agents. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But but there's there there were so many people, and in the, just in the movie industry alone. You know, every every movie company had a PR firm, a, P, a PR department, and they had several people working. And there were a lot of good people there, but there were a lot of idiots there too, who who just would give you the runaround, and you know, you'd have to chase them for no reason. You know. You know, and, the and hardest I, part about booking, and and Ronnie was good at this. The, the hard part about booking was trying to book a guest when they didn't have anything to promote. I didn't think that was hard. That was that was the tough thing for the agent to, to or the manager, because they said, "Well, why do you need to go on there? What are you going to talk about?" Because yeah. they don't get paid extra for for something by a company that. No, but it, it always seemed as though whenever somebody had something to promote, they were there. You know, you could get some pretty amazing people when they were out to promote a movie, because part of their deal with the movie company is that for a certain amount of time, like a month, they would promote the film. Yeah, that's if you are the only guy in town. Yeah, but but that's what I was about to say. By the time they got around to us, they had already yeah. been on twenty other programs. Right, and that was the tough thing. That was the political nonsense. Well, that that's went where on. I came. They said, "Well, we can't we can't go to your place because oh, we're already going in the building, and we're going to be with three other shows before that." You oh, know, whenever so. it was it serious, we were like third or fourth person to get them. Howard get them first if we were lucky. Yeah, if we were lucky. Yeah, so. But the thing was that I uh, prided myself on as an interviewer is I didn't care if I got them fourth, fifth, sixth, or one hundredth. Okay, that's the attitude to take. Because and there's, some, uh, there's I, some talent who said no. I got to have them first. I was a better interviewer than anybody else. Don't tell that to Howard. I'm a better interviewer than Howard. Howard's Please. good. Howard's good. What what do you what are you wincing about? The emails you're going to get on what this. Do you mean, what emails? Nobody listens to this show for crying out loud. There's always one guy. He I just want one guy goes to the next. I, guy. I was the other day. I somehow came across the tape of me with Howard mm-hmm. when he came into the studio. Right. Boy Very was good. boy Very was good. I overweight at that time. But oh, mo- but more than that, he comes in. He goes, "Gee, I didn't even know you were here at Sirius." I didn't know you were in the building. I thought you were doing your show from California or something. I didn't know you were here. Hmm. Howard, how long were you here by that time and you didn't know I was here? A few years, yeah. Yeah, and I went to myself, boy. In fact, I showed Marjorie the interview and she said, he's lying through his teeth. I don't know. Well, I'll hear from Howard's people now, right? Howard, Definitely. Will, Howard will come down, come from Sirius, and come do my show here to tell me off, right? That would be interesting. That was a magic day. Make sure you give him the Zoom link. Mm-hmm. But that was a ma- that was a magic day when I had Howard on. Yeah, a, a magic out of nowhere. 
and no, also nobody, also happened. because I took the wind out of his sails. That I don't recall. Well, no, I do recall because when he went back to his studio, what's her name? Uh, his uh, aide de camp. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Robin. Robin uh -huh. said to him. I thought you were going to go in there and yell and scream at Alex, and you were like a pussycat oh, yeah. with him. He said, well, I walked in, he shook my hand and said, hi, Howard, good to meet you. And what can I say? You know, I completely disarmed him. Okay. But you don't see it that way. I don't really see it that way, no. no what do you, how do you see it? I see it as, as he, he has um, uh, some respect for you for being around for so long. And uh, and for having had the history not only way back in New York, uh, but yeah. uh, also the long history in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and he knows that he certainly knows the history of radio. So I, I don't think he went in there to be a bully. I don't think so. Well, no, he, he well he he was mad supposedly because I, I don't put down what was that I guy's name? That uh, he had some kind of guy that went out. It was we went to the press conference for uh, 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 what's his name? Weiner, Anthony Weiner. And he then started, you know, asking horrible questions, horrible Howard Show kind of questions. I don't and and I felt that it was bullying the guy at a time when he was actually getting in front of the press and was going to be embarrassed enough as it was, you know. Uh, and that I just felt it was wrong of them to do. You know. and, and Howard was justifying it. You know, oh, anytime you can make trouble, you make trouble. And I, that's I mean, that was the, his thing. That's, I, that's that I was see. his show. That was his shtick. Yeah, but I said the guy was down. You know, he was oh, out. Wiener. Yeah, Wiener was down and out at that point, and he got before the press and said, you know, I, I'm sorry for what I did and blah 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 blah. And here's this guy going, Hey, Howard, how big's your Wiener? You know, or something like that. I can't remember. And in retrospect, he was right. Because Wiener turned out to be a bad sausage. Oh, oh yeah, of course, a bad sausage. <laughs> yeah, he certainly did, didn't he? He really blew it, didn't he? He, he came back. Yes. He actually came back and was running for mayor and was in the lead. And then he blew that, too. Well, that's because he sent another weenie picture to somebody, you know. And also because he was, he was, uh, he was a big mouth at, at, to, to the public at the time. Yeah, at some personal events, and it, you can't be like that. Yeah, but he also well, I mean, you, well, you you couldn't be like that then. Now it's what you do as a politician. It's yeah, it's absolutely what you do. As Say a nasty politician. things. You lie. You treat people Say, like dirt. What do you this think? Is, what do, What do you think of Kevin Spacey? Now here's a guy who was I don't literally think drummed out of the business. For accusations that he fondled this person or he did this to this person well then they went to trial first one this kid rap who said right. he when I was a kid he did it not guilty then the case in Connecticut not guilty now in England I think five cases against him maybe six all at one time right not guilty you think they're ever going to let him work again? Probably not. But he doesn't need to work either. Yeah, no, so. but what I'm saying is, not guilty. He didn't. He he hasn't been found guilty of anything, and I bet he has a hard time. You know. Do you right? think he was framed like Fatty Arbuckle? What do I think he was framed like Fatty Arbuckle? Uh, Fatty yeah. Arbuckle was. Well, if Fatty Arbuckle was in the you know the press basically uh and and that was the problem that, that uh, he had uh, it, it was the press it was Hearst press that tried him in the press he wasn't right. even at the saint francis hotel when this woman died you know you think the same thing happened to spacey i think you know i'm sure spacey was a horn dog okay a gay horn dog but you know Gays can be horn dogs too, uh, and I think he came on to people, and I think he was, you know, he was sexually active. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think the people that it, they were accusing him because it was the thing at the moment to just pile on this guy. Me too. And they did in England, and um, I'm sorry, he wasn't guilty. 
You think these people were opportunists looking for something, or what? What's the? I, I don't know what should. they were looking for, but all I know is that uh, Kevin Spacey, it turns out, is incredibly innocent. I mean, they tried him on what uh, two counts? One count, he, one time here in New York City, one time in Connecticut, and then the the four cases or five cases or six—I can't remember how many in England. All at once, that was the one in which Elton John testified at his trial, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the, one of the people said, "Well, it was before one of he was going to Elton John's party." Blah 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 blah, and Elton John said, "Kevin never showed up that year. He was never here that year." I thought Elton John said that he was there that year, but he didn't stop anywhere else because he wore. No, I think he said he didn't show up. That wasn't a, it was, that wasn't a year when he went to his party. Oh, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't know why you would know so much about Kevin Spacey. Well, I, I'm, I'm just a Kevin, Kevin Spacey. Spacey aficionado. Well, I, you know, it's possible that Harvey Weinstein will get the same thing when he's his uh, appeal is here. Too. Well, I doubt that. You do? I doubt that. Yeah. Because, but you see, he's oh, been. Was he a horn dog too? Here's the difference between he and Kevin Spacey. He was found guilty. Yes, he was. Kevin Spacey hasn't. And all I'm asking is, is the guy going to be able to work? And I'd say, no, he probably, probably won't be able to work. Now. You know, and which is well, who's, who's the com the comedian? Uh, oh, uh, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Right, he oh. hasn't really worked. Well, since. no, actually, supposedly, and he he did he wasn't even guilty of anything really. Well, supposedly he's doing like um, um, what do you call it? Uh, he's doing a lot of uh, shows in uh, uh, on you know stage. He's doing mm -hmm. concerts Live and, so on, and and sells out every concert. Well, he should. It's you know, so he's he's making a living that way. But he had such a wonderful... I notice I'm a little out of sync today. Why am I out of sync? I don't know. Uh, he was... Uh, uh, he uh, I think was given a bad deal. Because he was a perfect case of somebody who said, okay, I did it, I apologize. Shouldn't that be enough? It wasn't anything illegal. Not, o not only that, not only did he say, I did it and I apologize, he also said that when he, from what I remember, when he started masturbating, he asked the person, he said, I'm going to start masturbating. I don't in front think of it was even okay? masturbation. He said, I think I'm going to, I'm going to pull out my penis. Does anybody mind? Well, whatever it was, yes. And I he thought, asked that, I thought he was. And a, everybody I, said, no, go just ahead. Just wanted to say, what's he guilty of? Being a perfect gentleman? Could be. Yeah. You know, so I don't understand it. Uh, doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, uh, it, it was. I feel a little dirty when I come in here to this room with you too. It's like the, going into this internet room, this creepy internet room with this, with this old man. It is. I have to say, this is the way I feel every time. Ah, I come. Are you growing? It's your, a little. It's a little bit creepy. I notice you're growing your beard again. No, no. This is the Friday look. This oh, is always Friday look. Like, I don't shave either. I, but, I shave on the weekend. But you can't see it. Okay. Yeah, now you're getting to be the creepy old man. Look at my face. Where? Like my beard. Am I a creepy old man? Have I become a creepy old man? When you're in the room alone with you. Yeah, mm. but really? A little strange. A little strange. This is a guy I always come to for, uh, you know, self-image. Yeah. Uh, Let me yeah. ask you something. Uh, speaking of coming into this room, every time I come in here, I'm asked about cookies. Do you want to accept the cookies or reject the cookies? Now, every site that I go to, I have to do this now. This is ridiculous. And I know that's because of the European Union and, you know, making your privacy the, the utmost importance. Mm -hmm. It could, Can't there be a, one thing that I click that takes care of that on all the sites? Does that exist? Can well, I get wait that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who would turn down? Well, I press one thing and, and all the cookie places are, are notified. Uh, who, he does not want the cookies. That should be, but the fact yeah. is, aren't cookies delicious? I want them. Not these cookies. These oh. cookies are not delicious at all. Oh, well, I'm not, I'm not paranoid. That's just, this was just an aside. That, and, that and I'm not paranoid about people stealing my identity because in the immortal words of Larry Bubbles Brown, now they have no life. Right. You know, so, I mean, I don't care, people. Have you, well, we can get into this next time.
next week yes next well we may run it next week or two weeks from now but uh, we'll way. we'll you know we'll uh, because it's time for us to bring this to a uh, screeching halt well before you do that then yeah uh, as every program director would have told you please tease what we're going to do next time oh next time uh, we're going to take our clothes off oh well I didn't agree to that oh, okay that's ladies that and gentlemen Gentlemen. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. That's uh, our good friend, Albert Reynoso. Okay, I'll okay, see you okay, later. okay, okay. Bye, everybody. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, of course, Albert Reynoso. What's, what's better than an Albert, okay? What's better than Albert? Nothing much, nothing much. Hi, everybody. How are you? It's, uh, let's see here, what day is this? This is, uh, this is uh, Wednesday already. Uh, and gee, already two days out of the week gone. And I haven't done a show yet. Here I am, okay? Hmm. Anyway, let me see here. Let me admit him. There's only one person waiting right now. That's, a, that's the amazing part about it. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know... Um, I I would think there would be a ton of people trying to get on right now, but there are. Charlie, are you there? I don't see his picture yet. See, there I'm looking for his picture, and that, I don't I don't get him. Didn't get him. There he is. Okay. All right. There he is. Okay, you're the only guy calling. Seriously? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So uh, we'll stick around for about the next five minutes and call it quits. Oh, damn it. Okay. Damn it. That damn Brian Neary calls and makes it impossible for <laughs> us to get off early. Okay. Well, there's I thought we would talk about Trump's indictment again, but I guess y'all might have talked about that last night. Who? Oh, no, we were on last night. Okay. I wasn't on last night. No, no, I wasn't on last night. Um... <clears throat> And we probably won't hear from uh, from uh, uh, Phil. Phil, um, here here's what happened, okay? Uh, <laughs> well, you know what it, what happened, and you know too, Charlie. You watch the Monday show, so yeah. I I, I we, Marjorie and I, as we do every now and then, go out to the park to do our little stupid show, you know. And uh, uh, we get more. Believe me, more listeners to that than anything else I do. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's short. That could be. Could you know, be. That has something to do with it. Uh, but anyway, so I uh, um, so we're we're doing our show, and I somehow I don't I bring up Phil or something, and she starts nailing into him. Oh, you know, I wish he'd never call your show. <laughs> And I'm going, well, you know, she goes, why do you have him on? And I go, I have him on because it's important that I allow all people with different kinds of opinions on, even if I can't stand their opinion, you know? So uh, he uh, he got all, uh, so anyway, so, so we do this. It's only like five minutes, seven minutes to show. And when we're through, uh, excuse me, my eyes are tearing tonight. Um, I get a thing from uh, from him saying, I've decided I'm not going to call ever again because of what Marjorie said about me. And I just figure it's time to pack it in. And I wrote him back and I said, you know, just because Marjorie said it, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm not throwing my wife to the dogs, but on the other hand, it's my show. It's not her show. Right, and uh, he he hemmed and hawed him. And finally, I said, you know, we could always just go back to the old thing where once in a while I have you on for a half hour. And so he said, okay, I'll do that. So we won't probably hear from him in the middle of the show, and I'll only hear from him every couple of weeks because I've got a lot of interviews to play off. So whatever. I don't know, you know, but he does this every now and then. He gets pissy, and then he goes. I don't want to do the show anymore. Okay. All right. That's Can what I change you... the subject? What? 
Can I change the subject? The what? days are getting shorter. The sun's already setting. Yeah. The days are getting shorter. Usually you see the lines. Remember you the lines? You must have really wanted to change the subject. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with talking about Phil? Uh, wait a minute. Did you, uh, did you send me a T-shirt? No. Alan? No. Did you, Brian? Maybe. I look at the oh, smile on his face. Well, it wasn't me. <laughs> Hold on a second. I gotta go find it. Uh, here it is. So I if imagine liked it, it was I Brian started. then who did it. And you know, I always like gifts. I have to be appreciative of them. But I, you know, what made you? What inspired you to buy this T-shirt? Let me pull this out, folks, so you can read it. Charlie did. There we go. Uh, What's that hurt? <laughs> and I'm dying. Oh my God. I need that shirt. <laughs> that's what you say every night. Your body hurts, and now oh, I'm going to be dead, and all this stuff all the time. Yeah, well, no. You could have at least got the gabnet symbol put on it. That was very nice. There isn't a gabnet symbol. Not really, no. Anyway. The thing behind you, the the gabnet TV with the swirls. Oh, well, that's, that, that's not really a... I don't think so, but anyway. So uh, uh, what? In, so we you, that was nice of you to buy it for me. The thought it's the thought that counts. But you know, I was also going. You know, I'm not going to wear it out on the street because people will come up to me and go, "Oh, I'm so sorry that you're dying." You know, we're all dying. We're all dying. Yeah. Yeah, we're all dying. Yeah. <laughs> Some of okay, us so whenever you say something that your body hurts. And that you're gonna die soon. Then I'm gonna tell you where the shirt then. Oh, okay. All right. I will keep it nearby. And when when you think I'm griping too much about it, just mention it, and I will uh, put uh, put the shirt on. Okay. okay I I tend not to buy t-shirts for people. Really? Especially something like that. That's pretty cold. <laughs> uh, Brian's right. You do say that a lot, but it's. The white, white put it well, at my seat. age, everything does hurt. Well, at our age, too. And I don't know which of these things that's hurting me is going to kill me. See? That's what it's maybe, all about. Maybe none of them. Yeah. So, anyway. So, you know, I... Uh, um, there are a couple of problems here that we're having. Marjorie is going literally nuts. Uh, she's going crazy. Because she is so frustrated. Let me let me tell you what happened. She, her iPhone. Uh, we go to the Apple Store, and uh, the guy looks at the back of her phone and says, "Oh, it's all cracked." Well, we noticed it was cracked, but we thought it was the you know the cover she bought, the plastic cover. Take it off, and yes, the whole back is kind of. It's, it's a beautiful piece of artwork. I don't know why Marjorie wants to get rid of it. It's just kind of like she dropped it one too many times, and it kind of got these little veins that go out. It's very nice. I, I think actually it's a kind of model of iPhone that Apple should start putting out. <laughs> Cracked glass. But anyway, yeah. she uh, she got a hold of the place where she got it from and they said, well, you know, you're insured. So why don't you just, you know, call them up and get a new one. So she calls them up and uh, they want to charge her, what, $160 or something uh, to replace it. All right. Well, okay, but it, paid for the insurance, and now they're going to charge her what a deductible or something? A deductible, yeah. And and how for the phone or for the glass? For oh no, for the whole phone. Oh, okay. they're just going to replace the whole phone. Do you know how much it costs to replace that the 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 the, the, the you know the the case on that phone? Take a guess. Just take a wild guess. The case or the glass? The case. Sixty dollars. No, five hundred. You you're close. Five hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. So one hundred and sixty ain't that bad. Yeah. The, the, the case I have on my phone was thirty five. That's not the case. That's it's not the, the case. The We're talking itself. about the case. The, the, the case on the well, that's phone. That's why I was trying to clarify. Okay. The yeah. phone case. Well, for you know, I have Apple Care, and if I crack the glass on either side, Apple Care for. Sixty or eighty dollars will replace it. 
Well, that's what it used to be. I don't know. Apparently, but it still is. Well, anyway, she had insurance through AT and T. Okay. All right. They're expensive. Uh, well, no, I mean, he, she wasn't paying for it. Her biz company was paying for it. Oh, okay. So anyway. Oh, okay. So anyway, so she says, so she goes through the process, and they say, okay, we'll send you a new one. And as soon as you get the new one, then you have a box there. You put your old one in there and send it back to us. Otherwise, we're going to charge you like three hundred and sixty dollars for the phone. So she says, okay. So they send her a new phone. Well, they send they they make the mistake of sending it FedEx. Have any of you had to deal with FedEx lately? You mean fed up? I mean, yeah, FedEx sucks. I, I they didn't used to. They used to be no. very good. They were the they were the they were actually the oh I don't know the the height of the business. They were the standard for the business. Um, and uh, but it sh so she gets a thing that uh, she gets a thing that says, uh, "Oh, we tried to deliver, and you weren't here." So she calls them up and says, we were here, what were you doing? He said, well, no, they had the wrong address. She said, well, how can you live at, leave a door tag if you have the wrong address? Yeah. And I know these people, the people that have manning the phones now are morons, right? Yep. Mainly, they're not morons so much as they're people who have absolutely no control over what they're doing. And um, so, they they said okay well we'll send it out on Tuesday, so they send it out on Tuesday and we're in the apartment yeah. continually right. Uh, the first day we may have missed it because we had the air conditioner on and we closed the doors to the back and so on. And we might not have heard there. The second day, we're we're there right, and we don't hear a doorbell ring. And I go out, and there's a tag on the door saying, "This is your, this has been your last attempt, our last attempt." And I'm going, we're going, what? You know, we were here. Don't you knock on the door? Don't you ring the doorbell? And then when she calls them, they said, "Well, you know what he did is he had a problem finding the right address." I said, "How come there was another door tag on our door?" And this time it was on our our door in the apartment up on the eighth floor, so they had to come up there. Using that as an excuse is not an excuse. I say, okay, we'll send it out again tomorrow. You'll get it by 10 o'clock in the morning. Do you think we've seen it yet? And it says it's still stuck at the depot in, uh, up, in, up in the Bronx. And the last guy she called to yell and scream about it said, well, why don't you go on up to the Bronx and get it? And I got on the phone and I said, what part of delivery don't you guys understand? Delivery does not mean we have to go up to the Bronx to get this goddamn thing. It's that kind of frustration that's going to kill my wife because yep. she doesn't deal with it too well. And I don't deal with it too well either, but it drives me crazy having to listen to her. And that wasn't the only thing. There were other people she had to deal with. There was an insurance company that does our, our pharmaceutical insurance, and her office pays, for, oh no, no, it was for the dental insurance, right? Dental and eyeglasses and things like that. And her business takes care of it, but, uh, they, the, the dental people and so on, take it out of her, out of her um, 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 bank account. Um, and then she gets reimbursed by her company. Turns out that they changed carriers for the dental, okay? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, this other company has still been taking money out of her account. So now she's on the phone with them and I mean, all of this, she, it's going to drive her to an early grave. It's just terrible the kind of service you get when you deal with these companies now. It's just not, not fun. It's not uh, a pleasant experience. And, uh, you know, I, I never thought when I'd say this, but, you know, at least Amazon comes up and delivers to our door. You know, it, don't be surprised, Alex, if next week you get a T-shirt with the 
FedEx door tag on it from Brian. <laughs> no more. No yeah, more. <laughs> those door tags are. But thank you, Brian. By the way, anyway, the thought—it's the thought that counts. They say. I was in my twenties when I listened to you every single day. So who do you think curbed my sense of humor? I curbed. <laughs> it's your, your fault. What do you mean? I curbed your sense of humor. Well, you made my sense of oh, humor. Oh, oh, who, who, who defined your sense of yeah, humor? Yeah, sorry. Who defined my sense of humor? You know, you're right. I deserve what I get. So when I was listening to you in the whenever that was, I never thought thirty. 30 years later, I'd be saying that, but yes. Yeah. But anyway, so, you know, uh, it, it's that kind of thing. And we've just, I, in the last couple of days, we've decided that we're not too terribly happy. Wait a minute, let me just. Now and it's not. Oh, 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 damn it. That isn't supposed to happen. Wait a minute, hold on a second, folks. Excuse me for a moment. Uh, mute that sound. There we go. Now, let me do this. Okay. There we go. Okay. I had to... You know, I'm doing this all myself. You know, it's... But anyway, so, uh, you know, I mean, we, we just decided that this whole promise of computers and all the good they would do in the world has turned to crap. You know? I mean... I, if it weren't for doing this show every night, I would just stop even having anything to do with computers. And I'm not a Luddite. I'm a person who, who if you remember the show in San Francisco, even back in the day, I, every day I was, I was working my ass off uh, to tell people how wonderful this world of computers was. I was one of the first people ever to have a computer in the control room with me. And I love computers, but what they become it's like it's not it's how people apply them i think is what is the problem and the fact that you've got people at these companies and they're letting these people rely on the computers to tell them what's happening and what's not happening and not have any initiative it kind of you for years we used to have that thing about computers taking over the world i think they have yep. and i think they're controlling us and look, Charlie's agreeing, and Charlie's the most technical one of the most technical guys we got here. You know. I don't know about that. Oh, it's you? No, no, <laughs> no, no. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's me. I'm just saying that he's a smart guy in a lot of fields. I don't know if computers is his yeah. his well, That's where my degrees in, besides the astrophysics, is computers. So why do you have such a problem getting your iPhone to work? <laughs> Well, That's not a mainframe IBM computer. Okay. All I'm saying is that we, we rely too much on them, and also they're the same things that make robocalls, and they're the same things yeah. that, you know, make your life a living hell. And and it shouldn't be that way. These should have been things that made your life easier and, and better. What, and, model, what model iPhone does your wife have? Uh, I can't remember. It's the same 13. one I have. Uh, thirteen, I Same think. Same thing as yours of thirteen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why? Alan's gonna buy her a case. No, no it's it's a case. Phone. I'll get her a fourteen, and that way she'll have something better than yours. What do you mean? I'm going to get a fourteen. Uh, well, why don't you get us both? Get get not us. Get you both. You both. We're both going to get fourteens when they come out. The okay. reason she won. The 14s are out. Charlie That's and I have one. Oh, yeah. excuse me. The, fi the, 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 the 15s. The 15s. 15s. End of the year. Don't confuse yeah. me. I'm an old man. Don't confuse me. All right? <laughs> well, anyway. Well, great. It's going to be obsolete. I haven't had it a year yet. <laughs> I'll never... Uh, they're, they're having problems getting some kind of chip, and they think they're going to release it later than September. Like they usually do. Well, so, big deal. Yeah, really, who cares? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, here's here's something that, you know, I remember. And we lost Pee Wee Herman. We lost yeah. uh, Paul Rubens. Uh, uh, I loved his work. I really think his work yeah. was, uh, was special uh, and smart and uh, good. But anyway, the point I'm making is that I... Uh, um, I remembered, I, I saw a clip that they had of him. Remember he got busted in a 
Florida theater for jerking off, which to me, come on, you know, to begin with, it's a porno theater. What right. are you supposed to do in a porno theater? Sit there and say, gee, I wonder how this plot is going to evolve. You know, come on, you just don't do that. You know, porn is something. What state, what state was that in? Uh, Florida. Well, go figure. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, 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 I mean, it was a big deal. Uh, this guy runs the kids show on television. He's right. caught in the porn theater jerking off. Now, to begin with, what? He doesn't have a right to be a human being, right. <laughs> you know? I, so and, and anyway, he the next thing he did after that was he went on the, um, the MTV award show, the uh, you know video award show. And uh, the first thing he says when he comes out on stage is, so anybody heard any good jokes lately? <laughs> because, you know, that's all the joke, only jokes that these people were, were making the, after that. Yeah. And uh, so I felt uh, that, you know, I could come on today and say, has anybody heard any good news today? Any news that's worth talking about? <laughs> Yeah, I was I was sort of hoping that Phil would be on the show this week. I've talked to him, so I know that he's not going to be. But and because he 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 last week, and I don't want to rehash this, but Hunter Biden's getting preferential treatment. Well, okay, he probably is getting okay. Some, but, that has nothing to do with Trump. Yeah. No, but that but has that, nothing. That's, that's, that's one thing. But Trump is getting preferential treatment. If any of us had those documents, we would be locked up while the trial's going on. We'd be yeah. trying to come up with bail money. We'd be and trying you, and absolutely. And you watch tomorrow; they will not take him into custody when he goes again. Yeah. So when you want to talk about preferential treatment, you're absolutely right. You know? Absolutely. But I, mean, I don't. You know, I don't care about the whole situation with Hunter Biden. That's a completely right. different and separate issue. And how's his father responsible? Phil wanted to point yeah. out. Hmm? I didn't get that. Phil Phil said that Daddy was partly responsible for Hunter Biden the way he. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Let's, I don't sure. want to go into yeah, that. Yeah, like again, Phil, just, like Phil was the best father ever. I think he was a good father. I, it was okay, but he even admits he he really didn't do it right, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Anyway, you know, but all I'm saying is, it's <laughs> ridiculous. You know, you don't you don't. Talk, Suddenly, and and the Republicans are doing this. Well, what about Hunter Biden? Well, wait a minute. That's not has nothing to do with this. To begin with, Hunter Biden just didn't pay his taxes. What uh, it's alleged that Trump did was cause an insurrection. Yep. You know. So I mean, come on. They're entirely, two entirely different things. I, I and I. It, it's just ridiculous. I think when. When they bring up that kind of thing, and I, I've heard all. I, I go over to Fox, and I like to see what they're going to say, and their whole attitude is, "Oh well, he shouldn't have been arrested. He didn't do anything. What? What do you mean he didn't do anything wrong? If he, if he can't do the time, don't do the crime. That's what they say." Hello, Steve. What do you think of it all? Oh my gosh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a wacky world out there, you know, with everything that's happening. Hunter Biden, you know, Trump, everything, you know. Um, where do we go from here? Well, how many here really care about the Hunter Biden situation? Nothing. I don't, you know. Not really. Is anybody cares? bothered by it? No. I'm sure Kevin is. I'm sure Kevin is. No. <laughs> but bothered by Wesley Snipes not paying his taxes either. What? So I wasn't bothered by Wesley Snipes not paying his taxes either. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is a this is a tax deal. It has yeah. nothing to do with anything else, you know. And yes, I, huh? I mean, to go along with with what you're saying here, and I just feel like the media is they are the ones that are pretty much putting the spotlight on everything. Yeah. They're calling the shots on what's happening here and what we're we're getting fed, and it's just ridiculous. Well, to I, say, I, I, ju I just hate the fact that I go over to MSNBC and I get the news swung one way and then I go over to Fox to see what they're saying and that's like la la land over there 
yeah. I mean, I thought Republicans were people who believed in being lawful and legal. And they don't want anybody to do illegal stuff, and here they are, you know? Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, wait, I, I wait, wish wait, we could go back Hold on a second. To are you trying to say something, Kevin? Because your mic isn't on. <laughs> oh. The light is on. <laughs> yeah. Huh? I don't hear you. I can't hear you. He said, but nobody's home. Y yeah. He said, the light was on. He said, but nobody's home. Yeah, go into, uh, go into your uh, audio settings and make sure that that, that mic is... Would that be Tom Bodet? What? Yeah, we'll, we'll leave the mic light <laughs> on, on for you. Yeah. yeah. Motel 6. Cute. He can hear us, so part of it is set up. Have you got your mic, right? the right mic on? Huh? Don't say. Go on to your microphone settings. Welcome to Tech Support with Alex Bennett. <laughs> you know. Um, but there we go. Hello. There you yeah. go. There you go. There you go. So you were trying to say something, right? Yeah, it was the, I don't remember what the hell it was. Um, I would, well, I was it's just the fact that yeah. he is facing the piper. Who? And, and I did the same thing. I went from channel to channel and 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 listened for a half hour here and a half hour there. And it was just, it's like all these networks have been sitting there writing the stuff. And I'd said this to to Josh and Patrick over the last, yesterday, I believe. And I go, it's like these these networks have been sitting there writing this shit for the last four weeks and all of a sudden they finally the indictment comes out and they're just jerking themselves off over this stuff over the last you know, all day long i mean yeah they've been writing this stuff and now they're blowing their wads on all this stuff that's going on in the, in the 11 o'clock hour on msnbc today 47 minutes of the hour we're mm, taking yeah, yeah it's all that this stuff and all their opinions and it's repeated over and over and over every hour yeah i mean it's, this is what's happening and, and you can see cnn has their little smirky faces on you can see msnbc is sitting there going oh well this is happening and they go look at that and, they're, and they're smirking that you know that's happening and then you go over to you go over to fox and they're all talking about how Oh, it's a big setup, and this has never happened to any Americans. And this is an assault on America, and the whole bit. Well, they, they, yeah, what they failed to mention is the assault on America by Trump. Yeah, well, that's what they're saying: is that, that, that the assault on Trump is an assault on America. And you're all going to get this, and if they're going to go after him for this, you just watch out because they're going to come after you. And it's like, my God. Well, Trump you know? gets up there at his rallies, and he says, "I'm fighting this for you." What? Yeah. You, they Just didn't. Do, yeah, what, what did what did they do? How are you fighting for them? Well, you know, them are the ones that are kind of they're sucked into his whole little, you know, what's going on. Are you, are you ready? Right? Hmm? Are you ready for this? Twenty million dollars so far has been spent on just uh, before oh, this all came. Forty. I thought it was 40. 40, maybe? I don't know. But it, yeah, I heard uh, 40. Up, uh, up to I this mean, point. 40 this, million, and he's already got PACs going for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's coming from his campaign money. I thought yeah. that was illegal. I think no. it's supposed to be. Yeah. I don't it's think to be so. For political reasons. I, I don't for think legal. so. Well, I don't know. Uh, it should be a lack, not a pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, he, 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 every time, now look, and here's what just absolutely has gotten to me, okay? Um, and that is, and, and this is, it's, it's pretty disgusting. Right now, Donald Trump is neck and neck with Joe Biden. That's and, what, what? That's what they're saying. Yeah, and 51% of the people they've asked these questions to have said that um, uh, they they don't think he's guilty of anything. You know, what what has America become? Come on. Well, you gotta realize that I think the Trump base is stirred up, number one, and I think the Democrat side don't give a shit right now. It's way early. 
those those kind of things don't matter right now. And, yeah, I, but, and but, I think those but, kind of polls but, are just... But what, what can we say when this guy's popularity keeps going up the more he gets indicted? Because I mean, he's th- stirring up those base this people. This is a president who has three indictments against him right. at the present time. Uh, and a fourth, probably later this month, and uh, when we get the when Georgia comes into the fray, and they'll get even more pissed off. What's with these guys? You know, uh, what what's with America that they don't Trump, say? Trump hey, Trump was able to blindfold them or, or blindside them or hang a little thing and 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 uh, hypnotize them or something. Yeah, drink the Kool Aid. Drink yeah, the Kool Aid. Yeah, get the gun. Here we go. Yes, Charlie. I just want to point out that our attorney general in Texas, Ken Paxton, has been under indictment for seven years, and <laughs> during that time he got reelected as attorney general. See, that's America. Yep. Thank you. If I were any he's younger, I would move to Europe. Federal right now. indictments too, aren't they? Yes, he's under federal indictment. He's not under state indictment, but federal right. indictment. You can't vote, but you can get elected. What kind of shit is that? Yep. Well, here's part I don't get. Um, of course, if if, uh, if Trump, okay, is found guilty of these felonies, or at least just one felony, he loses the right to vote, and yet yeah. he still has the right to run for public office. Oh yeah, the right to win, and he probably has the right to pardon himself. There's I nothing don't. I don't in. think so. I, no, don't. I don't know. He says he can't. He can pardon himself? He cannot. Cannot pardon himself. It doesn't say that he cannot. It doesn't say that he can, but it doesn't say he cannot. But, but I think that that's only... because the founders didn't think you had to question whether or not exactly. a person they they committed a crime to pardon they himself. But, exactly. the, but the, part, the pardon only works for federal crimes, not state crimes. Yeah. Right. Well, these are federal crimes. The one that, yeah, not that, New that, York and not not, not Georgia. In Georgia, not New York, Georgia. <clears throat> Georgia would be would not be a federal crime. You're welcome. That's right. State state. State. You're state. right. And the one and the one in New York is a state crime. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that though is a crime that is only going to probably if he loses it, he's going to just have to, have to pay money. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, in New York, it's yeah. a tax thing. Yeah, it is a tax thing, actually. Yeah. Hunter Biden, by the way, has paid his taxes. Yeah, he paid it. Yeah, yeah he paid it. So here we got Trump, and he's got a, a tax deal going in New York. Um, I don't know. You know, he Trump has always been of the nature that he complains about other people's behavior that he's guilty of. Yep. You know. And and I just I I don't know, but I I just think I agree with you, uh, Kevin. These networks, news networks, are getting too too jizzed up about the whole thing, you know. That's how they make money. That's Serve how they make up. money, and that's why I I we we should have a nonprofit news organization that doesn't sit around f- saying. We gotta, you know, gin this thing up in order to make more money, <laughs> you know. But I mean, when I know that I'm gonna tune into MSNBC and I know exactly what they're gonna be saying, and when I know that when I go over to Fox, I know exactly what they're gonna be saying, uh, we have to ask something, a big question about our our our, our way of doing business in this country when it comes to. Uh, to the judicial system and to the news. I just I I don't know. Yeah, but they have the the First Amendment, freedom of speech. Well, what what was somebody was saying today about this? Because they were saying, oh well, you know, Trump didn't do anything wrong. He had the right to his opinion. Wrong. That the that the that the uh, thing was you know the election was stolen. It was on Fox, I heard it. No, it wasn't on Fox. This was on MSNBC. Somebody said that, you know, you can't use the fact, you know, you have freedom of speech, but it doesn't extend to everything. No, if you yelled fire in a crowded theater, it wouldn't extend to that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, their 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 defense on Fox is that uh, they're they're not they're not prosecuting him for inciting the riot. Yet that's all everybody's talking about is the riot. Right. When the charges are not actually about the riot. I think he didn't go after him on that. And I think there was a reason. No, they haven't yet. You ha- haven't yet. He can always level some more charges yeah. at it. Right, right. Uh, and and that's, that's truth. That's the truth. But, you know, not yet. Yeah. That may be I, building. I wonder how many of the co, the people they got information from, they claim there's six of them. I wonder how many of those people are going to get indicted. Like Rudy Giuliani, for instance. Well, I think he's holding back on those indictments because he wanted to put the main one out there. Probably. But I don't think that there is a uh, chance in hell that he's not going to prosecute the other ones, too. Uh, Yes, Ray. He's got his hand up. Ray? Yeah, I just wanted to say, I I read the indictment yesterday, and there's nothing in there uh, about the three... uh, violating freedom of speech it all had to do with his coercion and and the other things that he did uh that may have been adjunct an adjunct to what he said but it had nothing in saying he couldn't say what he said he has the right well no but what they're saying is, is that that he was saying what he was saying but he knew he knew that he lost the election yeah and then he also did things that um you know like with trying to keep people from voting with the thing with pants i mean the things he did and also you know, also the various states where they had these fake electors mm-hmm. yes yeah it's not that he s- said the things that he said it's what he did after he said it yeah i mean what he, they're charging he, him. you know i often i i said i think to somebody today in passing in conversation that nobody should know more about how to steal an election than Donald Trump. He's the expert, you know. He always accuses people of doing things that uh, he does himself. And when he does them, it's okay. But, you know, I mean, he tried to steal that election. Plain and simple. And all He's a master con man. I don't know if he's a master con man because he doesn't exactly get away with it. You know, okay. we all see him we'll in see. plain sight doing, except these morons out there who think he's the cat's pajamas. You know, he's, the thing he's, he's got away with it all this time in his whole life, and yeah. now he's bringing, he, he, they're they're making it accountable. Him, I've got, I, I'm saying this, and believe me when I say this, folks. And if you're a, if you're a Trump supporter, and I hope you're watching, I'm saying this. I'm aiming it directly at you. This man is an absolute threat to our democracy. I don't care whether he did what they say he did or didn't do. This man is a threat to democracy because he has absolutely no concept of what this democracy is about. And he will do anything to subvert it, not for any other reason, but for Donald Trump's ego. Yeah, for it. All right? He never did anything when he was in office that was for you because it was going to help the people. He only did what made Donald Trump look better. Terrible. Just terrible. And how you can vote for somebody like that, shame on you. Just shame on you. Uh, You know, go ahead. There are a lot of other people running for... uh, for president on the Republican ticket, uh, some of which I absolutely hate, like Larry Elder, who's only doing Santa. it. Because, he's only doing it because he's got a radio show and he wants to publicize yeah. it, you know. But there are a lot of terrible people out there running, and I would rather see any of them be the nominee other than Donald Trump. And Donald Trump, and I'm telling this to all the Republicans out there, is going to be the man who ruins the Republican Party, you know? And the fact that they're all lining up behind him, they're morons. The only one that isn't lining up behind him, you know who I like? I hate to say this, but, you know, when did I get to like Chris Christie? (laughs) You know? I mean, this is a guy, the other day, somebody said to him, 
But look, you were all close and all four. You, you backed Donald Trump for president? He said, yes, I did. He said, I made a terrible mistake. Yep. I thought he might be a good president. He said, mm -hmm. then he got into office, and I suddenly realized how sadly mistaken I was. I made a mistake. A well, lot of that's, people that did the I, same thing. I want that Including. guy to I want that guy to be president because I want a guy who's willing to admit to his mistakes. You Giuliani know, was had had a real good reputation until he defended Actually he didn't. Here in New York, he did not have a good reputation. Uh, well, I was in New York. But he did that the whole nine eleven thing happened and he he wrote the textbook on how to how to handle it. Okay, how to handle it in in publicly so that the public doesn't go crazy and you know lose their minds and you know panic and so on and so forth. He was on the air every day, telling people what happened, what wasn't happening. Uh, he handled that beautifully. But that was the only thing because before yep. then, people people he was he wasn't going to get elected again as mayor. I mean, is, that's how bad he was doing. And uh, he helped clean up the mob. As a federal prosecutor. As a federal prosecutor, yeah, yeah. So he could get his mob in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, uh, his wife found out she was being divorced on the news because uh, he didn't bother to tell his wife. Right. She found out watching the news. Donna Hanover. That's sad. Donna Hanover. Hopefully she got a lot of money. How, how come I can remember, remember names like that? Donna Hanover. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it was. It, 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 I, I just don't understand what's happened to this country. I mean, I can understand where Trump could have 30% support. Okay, I can understand that. There were 30% of the people in this country are absolute morons. All right? And I can understand that. But I can't understand why 51%, you know, or that it's a tie between Biden and Trump. Come on. Look at the choice. Yeah. You know, uh, Biden may be an old guy, but I think there's a lot of ageism going on there. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, sure, yeah, yeah. He, he's going to stumble and he's going to stutter worse than he did a couple of years ago because he's always had a stuttering problem. And he's going to seem like he can't do, you know, like he isn't, hasn't, isn't with it. And yet when you think about it, he's done the job. He was gone, Trump. He's gone to work every day and he's gotten the job done. And by the way, folks, have you taken a look at the economy? It's better. Yeah. Okay. So why did it collapse? Because it was Biden's fault? Or could it have been because it was Trump's fault? And he had to correct it. Yes, uh, Ray. See, but this is the problem. So if you go on Fox News, I've been watching it some, they will say day and night that the economy is in shambles. They say it. I hear them. Yep. Because of Biden. They, they outright lie and people believe it. It's it's, God, a ter it's just terrible. Yeah, they're riding the gas prices now, right now. Yeah. There's a reason why the gas prices are going up, right? Yeah, it's the Saudis. Yeah. 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 There's nothing to do with it. Yeah. Also, also, a lot of the wildfires, they can't run the petrochemical plants while these wildfires are blowing smoke in there. Yeah. So, I mean... How, he, he doesn't have any control of the wildfires. Yeah. I mean, uh, he, is there anything he'd do to put them out? I don't think so. No. Yeah. Or well, gasoline but, on them. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's the fault of the people who live in California if they don't cut their brush. Yeah, we don't rake our damn forest. You don't rake your forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, they, were, they were talking about all the all the emissions and all these big liners, you know, these big ships mm -hmm. delivering everything, you know, across the seas. How much and how many cars that would eliminate and all this stuff, you know. We're having wildfires here in Texas now. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be su I wouldn't be do. surprised if we start having wildfires in Central Park. It, it's been pretty quiet around here, in California this year. Yeah, it is. Knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah, but the fires have been it's happening elsewhere. Ago. I mean, we the Canadian fires have been sending down unbreathable air down here. Mm -hmm. You know, and this has been rather constant. Oh yeah, but that's Biden's fault too. No, yeah. wait a minute. It's not Biden's fault. It's Hunter Biden's fault. Yeah. 
all right um, but uh, it's who cares you know I mean uh, we, we got into an argument with Phil the other night about Hunter Biden and I'm saying Hunter Biden is not the problem that's the diversion mm -hmm. that the Republicans are using to try and say, oh, don't don't look, our, just because Trump is indicted, you know. And by the way, he is to be presumed innocent. I don't believe that he is, but he's to be presumed innocent, you know. And I'm I'm tired of giving the guy any slack. This guy's been a crook all his life. And you know, who is he still using the term the Biden crime family? Yeah. He's still using that? Who is more of a crime family than the Trumps? Trumps. You know, he was thick and uh, he was thick with all the all the mobsters and so on in New York. I mean, granted if you were a builder, that's how you got stuff built. You yeah. know, but still involvement is involvement. Yeah. You know, so anyway, what else in the news? Is there anything else in the news? There's got to be something else in the news. Well, that's it for our discussion tonight because there's nothing <laughs> well, else uh, in the news. Russia, Russia is thinking of using nuclear bombs against Ukraine. Oh, really? You yeah. have, to, you have to understand nuclear bombs in this case is not what you you know you saw when you saw the movie Oppenheimer. You know, oh, I didn't see it. The, it yeah. These are not that kind of nuclear device. They're low yield nuclear devices. But they're nuclear yeah, well, nonetheless. You know. It's because Ukraine attacked uh, Moscow with drones, so yeah. yeah. So you you retaliate using nuclear devices. I see Well that they're considering it. Yeah. You're a sociopath too. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so you know, I mean it, it's just it, there's never any good news these days, you know. Um, you look at the uh, you look at the uh, uh, the planet and what's happening to it. It's it's you know, it's, it's ridiculous. It's impo It's horrible. And Marjorie and I are saying, you know, well, how much longer is she and I going to be here? Let's say we live another ten years, but we're not going to have to see this like uh, some of your kids are going to have to see it. I mean, what kind of world is Adrian going to have to live in, uh, Brian, with the way the, the you know, the uh, uh, global warming is going? You know, she's oh. never known a time when there aren't fires in California, and there is, you know, terrible, just terrible. Yes, Ray. I mean, in my opinion, there's two things we should be thinking about climate change and preventing nuclear war i mean if any of those things get worse we're screwed well you know we've always been afraid of the threat of nuclear war nuclear war and the, you know the one I thing know. that's prevented nuclear war from happening is nuclear the, bombs the, being the, in existence the, on both sides the threat of nuclear war yeah, I know, yeah. but it's kind of changing now for some reason. I mean, just remember, the only country that ever dropped a nuclear device on a human population was the United was States. Yeah, and that was horrible. I, and, yeah, I just and, hope and, 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 and that was how long ago? You know, it was like, like, uh, it, it, 40. Uh, no, I just 46. hope if it, if it happens here uh, that I'm in the initial blast. Yeah area because I don't want to be dying of radiation poisoning and all that other stuff so well you know um, Charlie what do you think about a nuclear device I mean this is this right up your alley yeah I think uh, we're crazy enough to do it you we had mutual self-destruction that was supposed to prevent us from doing it but we may go ahead and do it anyway, as much as our crazy leaders are. Yeah. Let me ask Trump you. Would, uh, Trump wouldn't hesitate to push the button. Let, let, yeah. Let's 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 see if Charlie, see how good he is. Okay. Which bomb did they drop on Nagasaki? Nagasaki was a plutonium bomb. Mm-hmm. And it was called Big Boy. Fat Boy. Fat, Fat Boy. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. A, a little man was uh, the uh, uh, was a little boy or a little man? A little man, little man uh, was a uh, was what? Was the uranium bomb dropped on uh, Hiroshima. Right. Uh, because they were testing both different versions of it, they didn't know which one would work better. Yep. Apparently, they both worked excellently. Yep, they did. You know, but yet that was it. That was the last time. I mean, we we have blown a lot of other bombs. Yeah. Uh, but they were tests, and that was it. You know, and they were kind of tests to show the rest of the world. Uh, so there. You know, look at what we got. Don't fuck with us. Well, that's the other thing about the GOP is they're, they're just climate deniers. And if Trump gets in, he's going to end it all. Things are just going to get worse. You know, there's going to be no climate uh, propositions. There's going to be no move towards clean energy. He's going to destroy everything. Do you have any kids, uh, Steve? Me? Yeah. No. No. Never been married, no kids. Okay. Never been married, no kids. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I just don't know that I would. I'm glad I didn't have any. You know, I don't know if I want to have to have to present them with this this world. It's and a tough thing. I think about it all the time. It, yeah. <laughs> you know? I have two boys in their early twenties. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, most of us on the show are in the last third of our lives, and. It's it's the the ones of us that have kids and grandkids and stuff that have to live with this. Well, I mean, what are we now, and what are we going to do? How are we going to prevent any of this from happening if we've got? You see, I just don't understand. Okay, get back to Charlie a second. I was watching a thing called Unknown. Is it called Unknown? I think it's on on Netflix, and it's all about the creation of the James Webb telescope ah. yeah it's about how they worked on it and how they sent it up and and some of the early pictures that came through and I look over at Marjorie every time I see these things and I go don't we realize in the in this universe how insignificant we are and being that insignificant why can't we make love a life a wonderful place why can't we make this planet a, a, an incredible place for people to survive? But now we're all, all so selfish. Oh, we got to do this. I mean, Trump and uh, you know the, all that MAGA stuff and all that crap. And you watch something like that, and you go, "We just we're like a we're not even a grain of sand." That's how insignificant we are in the universe. And yet, uh, we keep fighting with each other, and we keep destroying this planet. I just, uh, you know, I'm not... Uh, but but everybody is running for president, and nobody's talking about all this stuff. It's all well, about Well, no, but nobody ever government. just says, stop it. You, you know, we're so insignificant. All we've got is this planet. Let's get along. Let's, you know, not ruin the planet. Let's make it uh, worthwhile living on it, you know. But no, we can't do that. We just keep screwing up. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, you you mentioned Christie. Well, none of the Republican candidates for president, including Christie, has ever said a thing about global warming, about doing anything about it. I think that uh, I think part of the problem is that's not on their agenda, and they don't think that they're. To be honest, that their constituents are smart enough to wrap their brains around it, but they'll still kill you. It'll kill people whether they believe in it or not. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. You know. Uh, but I mean, it, 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 you're right. They're not doing anything about it. Uh, it it's it, it's. I don't know. I'm just and the other big issue is the homelessness, you know, and mental illness, and nobody's going to talk about that stuff at all either. Oh no, but those people, you know, they got to take care of themselves. You know, what are they lazy or something? You're on your own. Yep, that's it. They're okay, on your own. Yeah. can I ask something about that? Yeah. So in the state of California, it's all Democrat run, and yet we have the worst homelessness, the least affordable housing, and what the hell? I thought this is a democratic state. What the hell's going on? Why don't we do anything? 
We don't do anything. Well, I can't answer that for you because I'm, I'm not living out there right now. I live yeah. in Texas, and we aren't doing anything either. And I think we're just. I just want to say that the Democratic the mental Party health Demi- system, mental health system sucks. And, and well, the Democratic Dem- Party are hypocrite, hypocrites in a lot of ways too. I just have to say that, yeah, I agree. especially I in California. Agree well, a lot and of this, especially doesn't, California, doesn't a lot of this go back to Ronald Reagan when he? Uh, yeah, quit? but but they've done nothing to fix but, it. Yeah, but that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> London Breed ran on that whole thing about the homelessness and going to fix that. She's the new mayor of San Francisco. And and look what's She's happened. Done. And she started saying later on that, oh, this is a very, very hard problem to overcome. You know, they start bringing up all these excuses now. And it's like, well, what the, you know, yeah. it's supposed Hello. to be hard. It's not easy. If it was easy, it would have been done already. Mm-hmm. And it's not just San Francisco. It's Oakland. It's San Jose. They're terrible. Yeah. This is bad. Almaden Valley, Palo Alto. Yeah. Everywhere, right? How can yep. people yeah. go? How can people not care about that problem? Because <clears throat> not in my backyard. That's it. No, not in my that's backyard. You know what it is. I don't I have a personal, personal you, person in in my well, family you, you that's dealing live, with it, yeah. and it's not even here. It's in it's in out, out, outside of Sacramento, and keeps getting put into the system and kicked out of the system. Steve, it's ridiculous it's, what happened. Steve, where do you live? You live in car. San Francisco. I'm in Danville, Danville, but I work in San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. So when you go to work in San Francisco, do you see this poverty? Oh yeah. I mean, that's why when you get off the Bay Bridge, you're in another world, and that's everywhere. I mean, even go to KQED and go around the building; it's homeless everywhere, and it's all RVs and you know, you name it. I mean, they're just all out there, and you're just like, whoa, you know. What's being done about this? They'll scoot them out somewhere else. Yeah. But they'll, they'll go somewhere else and then they'll come yeah. back. Well, you know, you know how dare <laughs> how dare the mayor of San Francisco say we don't know what to do about this? Aren't you a politician? Shouldn't you know what to do about this? Their excuse is that they don't want to do anything about themselves. That's their excuse. They'll put them into an institution and supposedly. They'll not want to go, or they don't want anything to do with it, and they don't do anything to help them stay there and get themselves straightened out. That's the problem. Wow. It's just, it's there's just, also I, a lot I, of like people. I said, I personally know that that's happening. Yeah. And there's also a lot of people on the street in San Francisco who had places to live before and they can't afford it mm-hmm. anymore. That's true, yeah. too. Yeah. Well, and that's what's going yeah. on when those people are around KQED right now. They're making around fifty, sixty thousand a year. They that's can't afford anything. Yeah, and so they just live in their RV and park wherever. So the median, yeah. what is it? The median price to, to to live in a house and everything else around here is like ninety thousand. And that's like bottom line. Ninety to a hundred thousand. Not in Almaden, not in San Francisco. You need to make a lot more than that. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's like bottom line to even get inside a a door. The last article I saw in the paper is if you're a family of four and you live in Palo Alto, San Francisco, and you make less than $104,000 a year, you're in the poverty level. Yeah, that's that's, that's right. Family of four. Well, this is depressing me (laughs) because I ain't making that kind of money at this point. Welcome to California. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm fighting for my apartment now again. You know, this is getting ridiculous. Hey, listen, good having you here all this evening. It's been a good discussion. It's, uh, uh, it, I'm frustrated. I'm, you know, the technology is driving me crazy. The uh, voters in America, in America, are driving me crazy. Hey, I don't care if you want to vote for Ron DeSantis. Just anybody but Trump. Come on. Thank you, Charlie. Really appreciate it. Thank you to uh, to uh, Brian for being with us again tonight. Nice having you here. Uh, of course, uh, our good friend uh, uh, Alan is here, and thank you, Alan. We appreciate it. Kevin, thank you. Thank you, Steve, our, the voice of Gabnet, and uh, thank you to Ray. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. And there'll be another citizen panel right next uh, on the uh, Jack Bishop uh, intersection in which you'll be taking your calls to Gabnet at Gabnet Live. That's J-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. I'll see you on Skype. 
I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.